All right, Savvy Chapter 30. Where's Samson? I repeated frantically. I stumbled to the back of the bus and turned over Lester's army cot. The others joined me, dumping out the bigger boxes and checking under every seat. But it was no use. Samson wasn't hiding anywhere on that bus. He simply wasn't there. We have to turn around, we all started shouting. We have to go back. But Lester had had his fingers knuckle-locked onto that steering wheel and was staring forward along the stretch of highway in front of him with the look of a man accepting the fact that his life was over and that he was probably going to end up the day in prison for trying to do the right thing the wrong way. I felt bad remembering my vow to keep Lil and Lester safe and out of trouble, but I couldn't sacrifice my own brother on that account. We couldn't not go back, even if the police were on their way. Lil got to her feet and stood up tall between us kids and Lester as he continued driving away from the Tuttle Terrace trailer park. Just what's going on here, kidlings, she wanted to know, calm but firm, her tone as parental as any mother's. Samson's not on the bus, Fish shouted, and a gust of wind blew Lil's hair away from her face as the temperature and humidity began to rise perceptibly inside the bus. My brother set his jaw and clenched his fist, wrangling his savvy self before continuing. Samson must still be at Carlene's. We've got to go back. Lil's eyes widened and she looked at us in shock. We left the critter behind. We all nodded at her mutely. Then Lil spun around toward Lester. Lester, turn the bus around. But, but, Lester stammered, Carlene's called the police. It doesn't matter, Lester, Lil, Lil assured him, resting one hand on his nervous, shuddering shoulder. We've got to go back. Lester drove forward another quarter mile before he gave in. He made a wide arcing U-turn faster than any school bus should ever do, and for a moment I thought for sure that that big pink bus was going to tip right over. We all held on to whatever we could to keep from falling, and boxes of Bibles tumbled and slid. We were nearing the trailer park when we heard the first siren in the distance. At the wheel, Lester had gone as pale as Gypsy's imaginary ghost. The bright afternoon sun slipped behind thick, dark clouds rising up from the distance, and the sky began to turn a funny shade of gray-green. I remembered how close we were to that fair-sized body of water, Tuttle Creek Lake, and threw Fish a warning look. I'm fine, he barked at me through clenched teeth. Nevertheless, I kept my eye on those clouds. Trouble was brewing. Ignoring the sirens, Lester... Lester turned into the trailer park. He'd hardly gotten the door of the bus open before the rest of us, including Lil, blew right out like we were riding on a gust of fish's wind. Lester followed on our heels, looking around him at the rising weather, at the trees bending and swaying, and at Carlene's lawn chair clattering down the street along with other rubbish picked up by the impending storm. Carlene stood just inside her doorway. The police are on their way, Lester, she shouted over the wind as we ran toward her through the first drops of rain. Where's Samson? I demanded when I reached the woman. I could hardly catch my breath. I was in such a panic. Where's my brother? Samson had to be inside. No one remembered seeing him leave the trailer. Bobby and Lil moved toward the door, but Carlene blocked the way with her raw-boned arms outstretched. This is my home and you are all trespassing, Carlene said, her pink lipstick sticking to her teeth as she sneered. The sirens were getting co closer. Carlene smiled. Left one behind, did you? Well, the boy is safe and sound and locked up tight until the officers get here. Locked up, Lil boomed, her little voice growing as big as the thundering sky overhead. Locked up? He's just a child. Where is he, woman? Lester demanded without a stutter or a stammer. The sky grew darker and darker and the wind shushed in every direction, carrying the sound of the approaching sirens away and back. But Carlene just looked at us smug and priggish, laughing at us with her eyes. You'll never find him, she said. That's one... That one's got a knack for keeping hid, I can tell. You know where he is, don't you, Lester proclaimed, stating facts more than asking a question. Carlene just shrugged. Lil rose up to her full height, hovering like a heavenly avenger over the small woman. The look in her eyes was as fierce as the storm rising up from the lake, the storm that Fish was trying hard not to unleash in full. But it was all just too much for my brother. His anger and worry got the best of him, and he let loose with a blast of wind, directing it straight at Carlene, knocking her all the way to the far wall inside the entryway. We tumbled into this shaking trailer, leaping past Carlene to look everywhere for Samson. The first place I thought to look was under the long tablecloth over the table by the kitchen bar, but Samson wasn't there. Everyone spread out, looking under the bed and behind the furniture. We checked in closets and cupboards. We dumped out the laundry basket and looked behind the drapes and the shower curtain. I even looked inside the oven, just in case. All the while, Fish's fury raged both inside and out, making the curtains thrash and wave and setting every loose piece of paper and every string gray ball of dust flying through the air, his wrath threatening to pull the roof right off that old trailer. I was searching the closet in the entryway as the first police car roared through the rain to stop behind the big pink Bible bus in a frenzy of multicolored noise. That was when a thought struck me. I knew how to get Car Carlene to tell me where Samson won. 
was all I needed was my pin.